this project is important as a restoration project because it's the first time ever a piece of English chinoiserie architecture has been tackled for a conservation project. With all projects there come challenges, I call them opportunities. You come across situations which you've not got immediate answers for. You have to do research, you have to know the building, you then have to come up with appropriate solutions. So all of those are challenges. There is no other structure like this in the UK. The building dates from 1762 uh, and was designed by Sir William Chambers, who at that time was commissioned by Princess Augusta. And I think Augusta's plan had been to give him in his garden of his house, effectively, a series of architectural specimens of the world. The pagoda is the last surviving example. Well, I think what makes the project interesting for me is the fact that here we are in a structure that's made out of brick and wood, basically, but it's over 50 metres tall. You can see outside brickwork, you can see slates, you can see colours, but in fact, paint is a key indicator of the history of a building and how the building has gone through a series of development phases. And what we try and do forensically is take apart the building, taking a flake of paint and analysing it chemically. And one aspect is obviously what the external colour will look like and what it looked like in 1762. Looking at early etchings by Sir William Chambers, we know that there were features on the roofs of this building, and those features were large external dragon sculptures. By 1784, the dragons had disappeared from the roof. We've investigated what the dragons should look like, and a lot of the time over the last year has been spent with specialist researchers looking at the dragon form, the size of the dragon, the colour of the dragon, what should the dragon be made of. We've had to look at innovative ways to actually make those dragons. And the feeling was we had to step into a new territory, which is 3D printing, selective laser sintering, and doing it in a material that is innovative, new, and probably for the first time will be being done in England and in the UK, even Europe-wide, that is using this form of SLS printing. And the added benefit then, I think, will be that future generations understand the traditional approach allied to a more innovative approach and that the two can actually be happily entwined. And if we can share that with the public and we can share that out into the workforce who will have to make these things, the benefits from this project are huge in terms of uh, the ramifications.